welcome again to Chair Interval Training brought to you by Community Access Yellow Springs and the Yellow Springs Senior Center and of course me, Lynn Hartman. I'm glad to have the opportunity to work with you again today. Please remember, go at your own pace, don't do anything that hurts and like with any exercise program, consult your doctor first and let's get ready to move. As always, um, all you're going to need are a few things. A sturdy chair, a, a great attitude, a little bit of space where there's nothing to trip, slip, or fall on, and um, some water nearby is always good. Some of you have gotten a kit from me, thanks for calling and asking, um, that had an exercise tubing and a ball in it, but even if you don't have these materials, you'll get benefit from the exercise. I'm going to put on a little music and let's get started. Now, you can do this exercise program standing or seated. You know you and you know how you're feeling today. So wherever you are, go at your own pace. I'm going to turn that music down just a little tiny bit. So, go at your own pace, use your best posture, and that will make your moving easier. It's been a little chilly. I'm looking forward to some warm up, but the most important part of our exercise program is to just start gradually and then slow down gradually. We're going to use a perceived exertion scale of 1 to 10. 1 being the lowest intensity, the lowest exertion, and 10 being the highest intensity or the highest exertion. And I'll be checking in with you frequently. You check in with yourself as you go along. Our target zone is a 4 to 7 on that perceived exertion chart. Just roll those shoulders and breathe. Of course, if you only get up to a level 2 or 3 and you're moving, good on you. It is so good for our bodies and brains and our mood to move. Oh my, I feel better already. Let's keep moving our bodies with a march. We're going to try a couple of patterns today. And I want to preview one to you right now. Moving over here to the right side of our chair so that we can use it as our assistive device. Or you can be doing this in your chair. All we're going to do is tap our heels out front with our best posture. Just Tap those heels lightly, so not a step, just a tap. And you can let your arms swing, just as they would naturally. If you don't need the chair, you can let the other arm swing and cross or oppositional cross-crawl pattern. So this is pretty simple. But I want to introduce a pattern called single, single, double. Here it is. Single, single, now two. Single, single, heel, heel. Single, single, double. Got it? So you have to be on that balancing on that one leg just a little bit longer. And you've got your chair if you need it. We'll see that some more, but let's lift our knees up and try that same rhythm. Single, single, double. Just warming up our bodies, getting that blood flowing. Always within reach of our chair. And always knowing we have choices. We can sit down whenever we need to. We can get a sip of water when we're thirsty. But go at your own pace and go gradual. One more of this pattern. And then we're going to 
Get a little stretch while we're standing, if you're standing. Walk one leg back, incrementally, gradually. And pace that heel on the ground as you lean forward for a gentle calf stretch. Hmm. If you like, you can reach up on a diagonal and pull up to the ball of your foot. Squeeze that strong calf muscle and then relax and release and repace the heel back down on the ground. Good. Pull up to the ball of that foot. Tuck your tailbone under and round your spine a bit. Inhale and open. Let's do that again. If you're rock steady with your balance, you might be able to take that other arm to the movement. But we can see and reach our chair whenever we need it. One more time. Excellent. Let's try that other leg. Walk it back, a little at a time. Pace the heel down. Leaning forward, getting a gentle calf stretch. Perhaps you can reach up on that long, strong diagonal. Pull up to the ball of the foot. Ah, and then relax and release and repace the heel on the ground. Now, bringing your shoulders right on top of your hips and your shoulders in your back pockets. Tuck that tailbone under to get an active stretch here on that hip flexor. And to limber our spine a bit. If your balance is super duper, you can do it with both arms. Good, let's continue to warm up. As we bring our body to the front of our chair, mindfully place our heels right next to the front chair legs and hinge our hips back a little at a time, gradual. So, as we get into the swing of spring, gradual is going to be the theme of the day. I want to talk about that a little bit here and there. But that's how we make progress little bits at a time, small, deliberate, mindful steps. I forgot to tell you, we're squatting a lot, aren't we? You can get seated whenever you like. Ah, and this is one great opportunity for you to get a sip of water. If you're not thirsty, go ahead and get one anyway. And as you do, step out to the side Use your abdominals to support your spine and your arm too. It's always a good idea to keep a container of good, clean drinking water nearby. Here's to your health. And it's always a good idea to do it when we're getting things down low, to do it slowly, gradually. All right, we're going to continue to warm up and get some dynamic stretches in our chair, sitting near the edge of the seat because it's thrilling to be here with you today, using our best posture, stretch out your right leg and your left leg, we're tapping those heels again, good, but if you like and it doesn't hurt anything, show me the bottom of your shoe by lifting your toes in the air and squeezing those quadricep muscles and pulling your navel in. And we're gonna add a little opposite push of the hand and breathe. Now, just to limber up the ankle, let's see if we can do a flex point flex. Flex point flex. The wrist also. Good. I'm waving hello to you wherever you are. I hope you're feeling well today. And I hope this exercise session makes you feel even better. Let's do one more on each leg. And then let's stretch a bit. Right at the edge of your seat, find a comfy perch. Make a nice stable 90 degree table of that other leg. Inhale and lengthen your spine. Keep it long and strong. And think of moving forward gradually. Lift your toes up, fingers too, to develop that hamstring stretch. And then push the pedal down. 
and sit tall. Let's stretch. Pull that navel in towards your spine as you lean back into, oh, my chair is chilly. <laughs> and circle at the ankle. Now we're stretching the back of our hip, but maybe your hip doesn't like to flex that greatly. You can limber up your ankle the other direction, and you can do it on the ground. You can always modify or adapt. Let's stretch out that left leg. You could also substitute a movement. If, if I'm suggesting a movement that doesn't work well for you and your body today, listen to your body. It got you this far. Lift those toes and fingers up. So you can modify, you can adapt, you can substitute. You can also rest and wait a minute and catch your breath or watch first and make sure the, the movement's going to work for you today. Limbering up that left ankle one direction and then the other. Good, sitting tall. Let's take a chest opener in a moment to remind ourselves how to breathe. Yes, it's very important if you can to try to breathe through the nose as you open your chest and you open your shoulders and you open your spine. And then it's important also to exhale like you're blowing out a little solitary candle making a wish. I wish for peace in your home and safe in your home and health in your home. So um, I'm going to ask you, and you know the answer, are you going to continue moving in your chair right now or do you feel like being on your feet? It's up to you. We're about to embark on about a 10 minute gentle low impact aerobic activity. But guess what? It'll work in your chair. Those of you who want to, you could be getting up slowly, gradually, take your time. And those of you who are happy in your chair, there you are. Just use your tallest torso to allow your spine to open up and let those nerves come out and do their job. It also makes more room for your lungs. So you can move in your chair. And there you're at. Or if you're going to stand up, take your time, dig your heels in, keep your chin up. And we'll be working behind our chair or in it on that single, single double pack. But let's build it one step at a time, gradual. Best posture, check. Got your assistive device, check. Okay, got our feet about hip width, and that allows us to do a little mini squat. Pump those thighs, get that blood moving. Now, lift your heels up, right and left. That's posture, keep your chest up. Good, single, single, double now. Single, single, double. Single, single, double. Good, single, single, Double, you got it. Now, if you wanted to make it bigger, you could. You could just add a little bit more bounce. Oops, you keep working. I'm gonna pick that tubing up because I don't want to step on it. You keep working. I'll just have a little coffee break. Single, single, double. Now, we are working on balance, but we have the chair right here if we need it. Because we're trying not to touch that toe down on the double. But if we need to, we can double. We've got our chair here. We can also tap that toe down when we need it. If you wanted to, you could row with this and make it even bigger. Single, single, double. How are you feeling? You should be able to talk. Talking while exercising 
means you're not working too hard. On the other hand, you shouldn't be able to sing operatically. Single, single, double. You want to make this a little more challenging? The answer could be no. <laughs> But if you like, we're gonna lengthen out that hamstring curl and work on hips. Single, single, double. Dorsiflex your foot to use those strong side hip muscles. And keep your head stretching upward. Remember that imaginary glass of water up there? We don't want it to go over. Hey, how are you doing now? How about a couple more and then we'll do a little check. One more. Single, single, double each side. Single, single, double. How are you doing? Woo, my hips are starting to feel that. On a scale of one, lowest intensity, and 10, highest intensity, where are you right now? Keep those feet moving, keep those toes tapping. Did you say a four, five, six, seven? Great. Eight, that's okay, but you might need to slow down a little, make it smaller. If you're in your chair, you might have to work a little harder or be creative. But we're gonna continue for about four more minutes. Let's play around with this pattern over here on the right side of our chair. You gotta be able to see it and touch it. We're gonna just start with that little mini squat. And then lift your knees up. Single, single, double. Same pattern. Different angles. Good. If you don't need the chair, you can take those arms. Single, single, double. Good. Single, single, double. Now, you've got that chair if you need it, because we're gonna take this pattern and double it up. We'll do double, double. Now, four, three, two, and double, double. Four, three, two, fight for it, double, double. Know that you've got that chair there if you need it. Because four is a long time to be on one foot. How you doing? Double, double, four, three, two. I keep talking that thing. Double, double, four, three, two. You keep working. Double, double. I'm watching you. Four, three, two, one. Double, double. Four, three, two. Let's add a little bit of movement. Double, little circles. Double. Four, three, two, one. Double, double. Four, three, two. How about one more time? Double, double. Pull that navel in and you got it. March it out now. Woo! How you doing on that perceived exertion? Scale one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You should ever get there because that means you can't do another thing. You can't even talk. We're gonna slow down and transition to some work in the chair. Get those heels right smack dab next to the chair legs so that you know if you lose your balance while you're squatting, you'll be right there safe in the chair. When we squat, we keep our head up. Spotting a point on the wall across the room really helps. We hinge our hips back, reaching, reaching that tailbone back. This may not feel like the most polite way to sit down, but this is the way to get the most muscle fibers activated. And the more muscle fibers we activate, the, we are lowering our risk of falling and we're using more of our heart and our lungs. Squatting can almost be aerobic, but we're also using our whole body weight 
And that doing those strength exercises with that body weight is going to not only strengthen your legs and your hips, it's going to add bone density there too. So should you fall, but you'll be at less risk to fall with strong legs and hips. But should you fall, you're less likely to break a bone. So it's a positive, gradual circle upward. All right, let's get a sip of water. Gradually. Step to the side, lean to the side, pull that navel in, and do support your spine. I know I sound like a broken record. But these, these little things that we make routine and habit are going to help protect us. Stay hydrated. Your immune system really needs water to function well. Alright, we're going to do a little bit of strength work now. If you've got the ball, great, go ahead and get it. If you've got a band or a tubing, just lay that on your lap for now, like it's a safety belt. We're going to strengthen our back extensors by slipping this ball behind us and scooching back. I'm going to have the ball be kind of right behind my breastbone or a little bit lower than my shoulder blades and I'm going to press into it and I'm going to suggest you do the same. Be very careful not to tip your chair but hold on to your seat for a minute. Push your heels and all parts of your feet into the floor. Tighten up your gluteals, that's your butt muscles and push against that ball as you exhale. So, pull the navel in as you exhale and push hard against that ball without tipping your chair. Keep a little pressure on it. It's a very small move, so you must breathe. Remember, inhale through your nose, exhale as if you're blowing out that little candle. If you are stopped up and you can't breathe in through your nose, no worries. Breathing through your mouth will work. All right, so that is our back extension. It's strengthening the hips and all of the spinal muscles that help us to stand upright and sit upright. We're going to add on to that. If you have a tubing, fine, grab it by the handles so that you have a big smile. And then grab that tube so you've got about shoulder width between your hands. And we're going to with a nice straight wrist, maybe reach for where the ceiling meets the wall and pull and squeeze our shoulder blades together behind us. Inhale, exhale, slow and steady, strong. And we're going to add that back extension. Take your heels in, tighten up your tushy, and push the air out of that ball. So we're doing a lat pull down or a row to strengthen our upper back, our rear shoulder muscles, and our biceps. And we've combined it, if you like, with the back extension. Good. So that we're mindfully squeezing our glutes as we push into that ball and digging our feet into the floor. Do your best and maybe end up with a little pulse down here. Squeeze, squeeze and breathe like you're smelling your favorite aroma. And exhale as if you're blowing through a tiny little straw. Good. Oh, I felt that. Alright, moving on. Let's work some different muscles. Grab that ball. Take your time. And we're going to be doing... Hmm, I want to do an abdominal exercise. So I'm going to turn sideways in my chair to show you what I'm doing, but you stay right there facing frontward. What we're going to do here is support your spine and put that ball under one of your feet. 
See that? Keep that other foot on the ground and move that ball around to where you can press down with mostly the heel and the middle part of the foot. So now what we're going to do is we're going to add a little abdominal exercise here. We're going to lean back a bit. You can make it easier by bringing your hands closer to your thighs. You can make it a little harder by moving your hands closer to your chest. But breathe each time you squish that ball. If you wanted to make it a little harder, you could bring your hands over your head. That makes it a lot harder. You could add a little opposite elbow toward the knee. But hold the navel in and feel your abdominals strengthening. Are you squishing that ball as hard as you can? Let's do one more. Give it all you got. Good. All right. We're going to take our time and maybe you guys are facing forward, but I'm going to turn to the other side so you can see what I'm doing. See how I did that fancy footwork? You could probably have done it with no hands either. Keep one foot on the floor at all times. Get that knee stacked over the ankle with the ball just underneath and give it a good squeeze. It feels a little unstable, doesn't it? That helps recruit or activate our abdominals. We're using our hips, our gluteals, and our hamstrings and a little bit of the quadriceps as we do this leg press. But we're going to add, if you like, those abdominals. So we're going to press as we come up and slide back to feel those abdominals working. If you're facing forward, you're probably able to just go back and barely tap your, um, tap your, um, shoulder blades on the back of your chair. Breathing. Pull that nail in. You want to make it harder. Again, you could come here. And you could do that opposite elbow toward the knee. Using a little bit of the obliques. Those are those diagonal side torso muscles. Excellent. One more. Give it all you got. Shh. Try to pop that ball. And take your time as you bring that ball and support your back. And gradually get it up off of the floor. Dust it off if it needs it. We're going to do one more exercise that doesn't require the ball. You'll have the option to add squats to this chest press. But to make sure you reach your chair, if you are going to squat, set your heels right next to the front legs and get your hips back in the chair. We're going to do a little chest press, placing that band around our upper back, under our arms, on the insides of the elbows, and test to see how hard that is. If it's too easy and you think you could do it a long, long time, put a little more tension on so that you can get some effective strengthening for your chest, shoulders, and triceps as you straighten your arms. It's like a push-up. Inhale as you open your chest, exhale as you close. If you want to add your squat, your hips will be down and back while your hands are forward, and your hips will be up while your hands come closer to your body. Keep your weight evenly distributed from your left and your right foot as best you can. Don't let your knees bow together. That's hard on the insides of the knee joints. And just keep breathing at your own pace. It doesn't really matter that you exhale or inhale during a certain phase of this. Just don't hold your breath. It's not good for our blood pressure. Do your very best and you'll know when it's time to stop. 
your body will tell you. If you have a little more gas in the tank, let's try a little crisscross and a little leg extension. Strengthen those quads. Especially if you weren't ready to do squats today. Switch legs. Those long, strong quadricep muscles will help you to work up to the strength to get up and down out of the chair more easily. Excellent. Woo, I felt that here. How about you? All right, when we're done with our strength set, take your time. We're going to move on and do another little gentle cardio set or aerobic, meaning good for your, it's oxygenated, good for your heart and lungs. But let's get a sip of water. Step into the side, leaning to the side, protects our lower back. Supporting with our arm, supporting with our abdominals also protects our back. All right. We're going to do another little uh, cardio thing. And this one, the focus is on agility. We're always going to focus on the ABCs, agility, balance, and coordination with some strength and some flexibility peppered in there. But this one, I showed you last week or two weeks ago. You might not have tuned in, and we're gonna put a little twist on it. It's just a simple out to the right, out to the left, in, and we can do it at different speeds. We could do it a little faster, sitting tall. We could go even faster, and if we want it, if we can, we can go faster as fast as you care to go. So we're going to try this in our chair and see, yes, it gets our heart rate up, but if we're able and willing, and we're going to be standing, and that might use a little more energy. So pick your favorite pose, whether you're in your seat or on your feet, just keep moving. So take those heels in and draw your hips forward. If you feel dizzy while you're getting up, just sit right back down mindfully. That's why we have our feet close to the chair. If you're standing for this pattern, do get behind your chair and double check to make sure there's nothing under your feet other than the soles of your shoes. And best posture, starting with a narrow or neutral stance, we rehearse that to our right, so let's try it to our left, shall we? Step out, put your weight on that foot, step out, weight is equal, in. In, let's do it super slow one more time. I'm going to pretend we're going on a little car ride. And you never back out of your driveway at a super, super high rate of speed, do you? No, we don't want to hit any neighbors. So we might even need to look over our shoulder as we back out of our driveway. And that challenges our balance. But do it just sort of easy with your neck movements. Never hurt each your feet. Good. No neck movements. A little faster. Out. Out. In. In. We've successfully backed out of our driveway. Maybe we need to hold the steering wheel. And we're going slowly in our neighborhood. Being mindful, being a defensive driver, wearing our seatbelt. Of course we're wearing our seatbelt. It's the law. But more importantly than the law, it keeps us safe. Okay, how are you doing? Are you ready to go at tempo? We're approaching a main road. Out, out, in, in. Out, out, in, in. So I'm... I'm I'm pretending we're taking a car ride. We know we're not going out for anything but essential business. <laughs> so that's why a virtual car ride. Well, how are you doing? Are you ready? It looks like we're going to turn right on to US 68 and we might have to speed up. Here we go. Faster. Out. Out, out, in, in, out, out, in, in, out, out, in, in. Sooner or later, we might have to go on the interstate. 
and accelerate. Are you ready? Woo! As fast as you can go. If you've got it, you can even take your hands up high, like adjusting your mirror. <laughs> I don't know. We wouldn't be doing that while driving fast. How are you doing? Are you running out of breath? A little breathy? Slow it down. Let's check our perceived exertion. Or maybe how much gas you got in the tank. But keep your feet moving, we'll jump. One being lowest intensity, and 10 being highest. How do you feel now? Can you talk? I hope so. If not, you definitely need to slow your vehicle down and get seated and breathe. Now, if you're gonna come on this little ride again, we're gonna do it at starting slow, gradually speeding up, and we're gonna add a little brain game. So, with your narrow, neutral stance, the start to the right this time, super slow. Ready, here we go. Step on that right foot, weight on it, and left, in, in, a little bit faster. Out, out. Stay at the speed just for a couple more to get in your mini squat. I almost forgot which leg I was doing. <laughs> okay, one more at the speed. And then tempo. Out, out, in, in. Or one, two, three, four. Here's our little brain challenge today as we move our feet, because we know this will help build neuroplasticity. We've got our chair if we need it, but we're going to clap on one of the four beats. And you see if you can follow along. Let's clap on one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. You can even say it if you like. We're clapping on one. Three more times. Now clap on two. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. You got it? Two. One, two. Two. Three more times on two. 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 Now on three. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. How are you doing? Whoops, I missed it. Three, four. One, two, three, four. I was thinking ahead. Don't think too much. Just stop your clapping and move your feet as fast as you can make them go. Maybe one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And see if you can clap on four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. That's hard. Take a deep breath, ask yourself on that perceived exertion, on that talk test, how are you doing now? Do you need to take a breather? Fine, let's do it together. Let's balance for a moment before we get to our strength set in our chair. Standing tall. Imagine a book on your head and don't let it tilt as you lift your leg to the side. Good. See if you could do that with your hands near your chair and look to the side. Woo, and balance without touching that foot down. Good. Woo. Let's try it the other way. Put that imaginary book on your head. Keep your hands right next to your chair and hip abductor. Lift that foot to the side. Balancing on one leg. And then see if you can look to the side. That adds a lot of challenge, doesn't it? Woo, stretch a little. And take your time as you return to your seat. You got the choice of doing a few squats here. Get your feet right next to the chair legs. Keep your head up. Spot a point on the wall. Hinge your hips back. You can even hover, and that would be an effective strengthening exercise for your hips and your thighs. However, if you add a little power on the way up, that's really going to call up some more muscle fibers and bundles, and you'll get a bigger return on your investment. Do a couple 
more if you can. If not, get seated. Take your time and give yourself a, a, a little hydration break. Step it to the side, leaning to the side. Uh -huh. I think I told you before, a leading cause of dizziness is dehydration, but it's also a leading cause of headaches. And our brain doesn't work as well when, it's, when we're dehydrated. So just a little bit of a dehydration can really start to cause a negative spiral. But that's avoidable. Just stay hydrated, stay healthy, stay happy. We're going to use our strength tools again. This time, um, I got I mixed up my little messages on the wall, but we're going to use this ball to do some hamstring curls. I don't think I've done this with most of you before. So you're going to stay facing forward and sit back in your chair and tuck that ball behind your, well, right in the crotch of your knee, behind your knee, and then squeeze it. You might have to work to get the position. I'm going to turn to the side. No, I'm not. I'm going to grab my band. And I'm going to place it on my lap, just like I'd wear a safety belt. And then after I get that ball where I like it, I'm going to squeeze as hard as I can to strengthen that hamstring. Keep the pressure on there so it doesn't squirt out and go away. If you're getting crampy or anything hurts, stop. You could do the lower body hamstring curl and then rest. And then we're going to add an exercise. We're going to grab the two handles in one hand and we're going to grab the rest of the band in the other. And just like an archer would shoot her bow, we're going to keep that right arm straight and the shoulder down. And we're going to take the left arm and pull back the bow. Keep that right arm straight. If you like and everything's feeling good, keep going and add back that leg curl. Pull back that heel as you pull back the bow. Keep the wrist straight. If you want to make it harder, you're going to grab more of that too. Ooh, that's hard. We're getting a good tricep and rear shoulder exercise on the right arm that's staying straight and strong. And we're getting a good bicep and rear shoulder upper back strengthener on the left. Ooh, okay, relax out of that. Let's switch it. Placing the ball, take your time behind the left leg or the other leg, the one you didn't do yet. When you've got it where you like it, give it a couple good hard squeezes. Good. Okay. Keep the pressure on that ball and let's try the archer on the other side. The spine nice and tall, shoulder in our back pocket. Keep the left arm straight and strong and pull back your bow. If you want to, add that heel pull back too. Exhale, inhale, repeat. Wrists are safest when they're straight. So try not to cock your wrist one way or the other. Keep them long and strong and straight. Wow, I can really feel my hamstrings working hard on this one. How about you? Excellent. Do your best and then you get to rest. Whoop, I almost lost my ball. Okay. We're going to put this tubing up again. And we're going to use the ball to do an outside of the hip exercise. If you scooch right to the edge of your chair, you can do this seated and then I'll show you how to do it standing, which will also give you a lot of balance work. So, sitting tall, take the ball, and you can use the inside of the forearm wrist or the hand 
And if you want, and you don't have any pain in your hand, you can squeeze your ball as you do this. Slide that hip out and push against it. So we're working the chest and the shoulder stabilizers on that right arm. And we're just barely gliding our foot over the floor and pushing to make our hips stronger. Pull the navel in. This is harder than it looks if you're pushing hard against yourself. Good, a couple more on this side. Really working this shoulder and chest. Let's switch over to the other side. Sit tall again. Do your best. Just sliding that ball, or sliding that foot across the floor. Breathe. If you want, you can squeeze the ball with good grip strength too. But breathe each time and really work yourself. You know how hard you're working. Do your best. It's better to work really close to your maximal ability with strength when you're not having pain, and then stop. Then you'll be able to rest and do it again. If you like, this time I'll show you standing. But if you don't feel comfortable or you feel dizzy or wore out, you can do it again in your chair and you'll get stronger there. So, as you stand up, it's an unsquat opportunity. <laughs> Let's go over to the right side of our chair. Make sure you've got it in your left hip pocket. Best posture. Dorsiflex your foot or peel the toe up and push as you do that. Try to keep that proverbial imaginary book on your head. And if you really want to challenge your balance, you got to have your left hand right there on the chair. You can look to the right, Ooh, look to the left. That's hard. And that standing hip is working really hard too. One more. Ooh. Give them a little rest. And then we'll finish off with our last strength exercise over here on the left. Best posture. Dorsal flex or peel that left toe up off the ground, strengthening the shins, and we try that hip abduction. We've got our right hand right near the chair, and we can also put our foot down, but keep that imaginary book on your head and push hard. If you want to challenge your balance, look to the left, look to the right. Do your best. Breathe. Oh, that's hard. One more. Man, I felt that in my hips. Both on the standing hip and the working or moving hip. So let's give our hips a little break. Let them move a little. And if you put your weight on your left foot and you outward towards the left side. You can stretch those hip muscles. And stretch your torso. Good. Ooh. Let's come over to the right side and do likewise. Putting our weight in our right leg, pushing out on that right hip. And then stretching. We worked our hips in this frontal plane or left and right. Let's try it forward and back while we work on balance. Again, if you're seated, this one's a hard one to uh, adapt to the chair, but it's not a vigorous, it's just excellent for our balance. So standing tall, dorsiflex or peel that right toe up off of the ground and swing your foot forward and swing your foot back. And take your arm opposite. Keep that left hand right there near your chair. Now if you want to challenge your balance here, very carefully again, look to the side. And then the other side. Ooh, that's hard. We're also doing coordination. Got our chair there and we can put our foot down whenever we want to. I said that when we get over here, 
I said that was the last balance or strength exercise, but we are going to do one more if you like. Set up for success with that chair in your right hip pocket. Best posture. Hold the navel in. Peel your left toe up. Swing from just the hip. It's not a knee swing, it's moving from the hip. So keep the buttocks, the, the gluteals tight and the tummy too. Move your arm opposite. And if you want a real challenge, look to the left. Slowly look to the right. By moving our head, we're making a challenge to the visual and the vestibular systems, which we rely on a lot for our balance. Woo! I'm ready to have a seat and get a, get a, a nice, relaxing stretch. How about you? Well, you know, every time we sit down, it's an opportunity to, to go slow and mindfully, gradually, bring our heart rate back down. That's what we were doing with those hip exercises. We don't want to end on a, with our engines running at full speed. So take your time. If you feel like sitting down, go ahead and get in that seat. If you want to do a couple more squats, more power to you, literally. And once you're seated, let's get a sip of water. Be mindful, step to the side, knee to the side, and support your spine. Oh, running out of water. <laughs> wow. Okay. We're going to slow down a little bit here. While we're stretching, I want you to remember to keep breathing at your own pace. We can lengthen that right leg and support on our lap. If your arm or shoulder is unhappy being extended, you can always smooth the joint by shortening it. But keep your back long and strong and reach your nose forward and your tailbone back. You don't get extra points for touching your toes, but do try to dorsiflex the toes back towards your nose. Excellent. Let's try that on the other side. By having our knee at a right angle, it makes a nice, strong support base. And we're only going to hinge about halfway forward towards our lap. Any further might be kind of hard on the lower back, that's why. Lift those toes up. And then down. Like I said, you don't get any points for being able to touch your toes, but dorsiflexing them closer to your face kind of develops this hamstring and calf stretch gradually. Take a nice deep breath. Hands together, opening back. I am so thankful to be able to do this with you. And again, I thank the folks at the village. Our village government is doing a great job of helping us stay safe. Stay connected. Stay tuned to this channel. You can subscribe and, and watch all of the village government and other important information um, real time if you want. And you can go back and refer to them whenever you want if you subscribe to the YouTube Community Access Yellow Springs. I'm also very grateful, as we turn sideways, um, to our, our state's government, our local village government is doing an awesome job. I'm so pleased that I chose to, to live here. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and then our, our state government's doing a great job. Let that knee drift down and let that long, strong quadricep and hip flexor lengthen as you inhale up. Opening your spine allows those vertebrae that may have been pushed back to come in and give you the proper support. 
exhale as you stretch through the side of your body. Remember, if your shoulder needs a little support, soothe it by shortening. And ease out of that. Turning the other way, take your time. So gradual. We don't want to try to shove our leg back there really quickly because we might get a charley horse or a cramp. So do it gradually. Let that knee drift down. Crown of the head drift up. Arm two, opening the spine. And then stretching towards your chair back if it feels good. Breathe and relax. All right. Let's try a little hip stretch. We've done this one before. I call it the figure four stretch. Well, every, lots of people call it that. We're letting the outside of the knee drift down toward the floor while we support our back on that other. Or the knees open like the pages of a book. If you're more flexible, you might be more comfortable with the ankle on top of the left. And either way, we're just simply gently coaxing gradually the outside of the knee downward. Again, nothing too sudden or we might get hurt. So, as we've been sheltering safely at home and getting so much wonderful support from our local and state government, We're, we're doing good work together. We're staying connected. We're staying tuned in. We're staying safe. And part of being safe is doing things gradual. And as you've heard, if you're tuning in to Governor DeWine, our own Yellow Springs native, and Dr. Amy Acton, brilliant, brilliant doctor and compassionate. As you've heard, it's going to be a gradual return. This might be kind of sad for many of us. We might feel a little bit numb. I've heard a couple of villagers say they felt numb. We might feel rightfully so like we're mourning the loss of something because we're not going to have things be the way they were. I think it's okay to acknowledge that, and it's really, really important to take time for self-care. That's what we're going to finish off with. Being mindful, breathing. I'm going to get this ball out of my way. Sitting back in your seat, relaxing your body, relaxing your mind. One thing that is never going to be the same, that, that might give you something positive to focus on is, you can bet we're going to emerge from this smarter, stronger, with systems. That's what our governments are doing, and we all have to help in our own way. So, as you think of that, I want you to relax your face, lower your gaze, close your eyes if you like, relax your shoulders and neck. Each time you take a breath, let it refresh every cell in your body, inhaling through your nose, exhaling naturally, effortlessly through your mouth. You might like to use the imagery of light each time you breathe in. Think of a glowing energy, life force entering your body, filling your lungs, pumping through your strong heart to every part of your body, to the fingertips and the toes. And as you exhale, you can let that energy and your own light kind of 
shine outward. Each breath energizing effortlessly. Each exhale an opportunity to release. And if you like the imagery of the light, use it. If you'd like another one, use that. One of the silver linings of this coronavirus crisis is that it's allowed many of us to let our light shine. People in the grocery stores, they're really vital right now. People in our restaurants, we are so fortunate to have a strong, vital village. My heart goes out to, especially today, the people at Friends Care Community Center. I want them to know we're thinking of them. And when we gradually get back up to speed with all of our businesses and services, we're going to be stronger and we're going to have a system in place that's better able to serve everyone. So let's not be in a rush. Nobody anywhere ever said, you know how I fell down and hurt myself? I was going too slowly and too carefully. <laughs> so be safe, be mindful, let's go gradually, and let's err on the conservative. Um, until next time, I have had a great time moving with you again. Stay tuned, and I'll see you the next time you decide to turn this on. <laughs> Bye for now.